Hello everyone, and uh, today we're building the Tamiya 135th Stug 4. Now this kit was really really nice and actually everything in it went together super well. Uh, I only had one problem with a little bit of a gap and that was between the upper and lower hull but I'm pretty sure this was just down to me not watching it as the glue set. So I did the drive sprockets first then moved on to the idler sprockets and then I moved on to the road wheel. These all fit together really really well and I actually decided to pick up a bottle of this Tamiya Super Thin Cement and this is actually much nicer to use than the Revel stuff I've been using before. The brush applicator allows you to get it on really really nice and it's so thin that you can actually brush it over joints and it won't leave any signs of it being there after you've done it. It'll dry away completely smooth with the rest of the model. Since I had this new glue for the exhaust I tried a new technique. I applied cement all over the exhaust and then stippled it with the brush and I used a separate brush as well to get a coarser texture over the exhaust. This will make it look like it's rusted as usually exhaust will burn off whatever paint is put on them and then they're open to the air to rust. Now this kit is actually one to me as cheaper kits and I'm actually really really impressed with it. Everything went together perfectly well as pretty much all to me kits do I find. I've made their T62A and their T34 which are also cheaper kits and everything in it fits together really really well. Now I picked the Stug 4 because I really like the Stug series of tanks that Germany had designed in World War II and they were actually one of the most successful tank designs of World War II especially on the German side. Now I took my time with the barrel as I always do in all my models to try and get it look real nice and not have any seam line going down the middle of it. This will definitely take away from the final result. Now this gun is actually the same calibre as the Pac-40 gun I built in the last episode and it's just kind of weird to think that that whole breech has to be encased behind the gun now as well. The gun actually has all its elevation and depression adjustability built into it, so it's really nice like that. I tried making my own weld textures in this, and it was my first time doing it, so everything was kind of shaky, I guess. Now, they do look really out of scale here. I came back with the X-Acto knife, and then I took a lot of thickness out of them, so they look a lot more in scale now. You'll see that in the final pictures at the end. Now my plan for this tank was to use new techniques and figure out about how I can actually better build my models. As I'm quite new to this, I've only made a couple of models, about five I think, before this, and I really wanted to pick up new techniques that I could bring across to further builds. So I decided to go ahead and use that exhaust technique and other different techniques as you'll see in a minute. And also for painting this I have a good idea of what I want to do. I want to make this tank look really worn like it's been through war and try it out.
Here I'm adding dents and dings to the fenders as these are most likely places to get hit with a rock or someone to back into the tank or the tank to hit something. So I decided I'd add them just using the pliers and trying to bend them. Now this is the only place where I had a problem with seam lines and this was the only one that left any bit of a gap. Now I'm pretty sure that this was down to me not watching it while it was gluing but at the same time I'm not sure because I have had this problem on some other Tamiya models at the same price point. All the running gear is really really nice as it allows you to place them in and you can actually take them off as well and they have a good friction fit. This means it's really easy to put them on and take them off between painting. Now the tank is really starting to take shape and I think everything on it looks really really nice. Now I also added some weathering to those side skirts as well. I heated a needle and used it to create bullet holes in them and I'm actually pretty happy with how this effect turned out. Now for weathering I'm definitely going to make it look like it's been kind of faded and heavily used and mucky and everything so those are some techniques I'm really looking forward to trying out. Here I'm actually cutting holes, as these would all be separate parts in real life, but they come molded as one in the kit, and I bend in the corners just to symbolise that it's been kicked in here or something had happened to it. Now if you do want to stick around and see me actually painting this model, make sure to like and subscribe and the video will be out within the next week. I have some really good ideas on how to paint it. I will do painting next week and then weathering the week after and I really want to take my time at all three stages and try and create a really nice effect with this tank. I may even go on and put it on a scenic base as well. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, here are some final shots of the model and I hope to see you next week. Thanks for watching.